This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted here at the Niles Public Library in the group study room on the beautiful uh, morning here on November the 3rd, um, 2007. Uh, my name is Neil O'Shea, I'm a member of the reference staff here, and I'm privileged to be sitting across the table uh, from Mr. Chester uh, Regala, who has um, donating his time this morning to provide us with a memoir uh, of his service uh, in World War II uh, as a member of the Army Air Corps. And uh, Mr. Regala uh, was born on June 7, um, 1925. Uh, on Mr. Regala's right left uh, is his son Richard, who gave us a wonderful uh, uh, interview uh, earlier this fall. He was a veteran of the, the Pueblo, taken by the North Koreans. And, and um, uh, Mr. Regalo's right is sitting his wife of 61 years, Dorothy. So uh, we've got uh, a lot of the family here this morning. Um, so um, it should make for a very good interview. Um, Mr. Regala, we have a series of questions here that they recommend that we ask uh, all of our vets. And I think here about our 31st uh, interview now. So um, our first question is, Mr. Regala, uh, do you recall when you entered the service? When did you enter the service? Uh, what is it? Uh, do I recall? Yeah, when you went in, the day. Yes, I recall. And uh, the date. And uh, where's that? That picture. Oh, there. That was taken about a day after I went into the service. That's when I was inducted. We went to this area in uh, Michigan, and this was the group of people that I was with. Do you know when that was? What day? Uh, that day, I think it was. Uh, 44, so that had be about September, October. Induction was the 19th of August, 1943, and uh, well, you just got out of high school. So you were just 18. Yeah. 18 years old. I he guess. graduated in June and August. He was. He, you said he would have been. Uh, uh, what do you call? You know, they do when drafted. He would have been drafted. He said, right? So he, he joined, right? Yeah, well, no sooner I got uh, turned 18 and graduated from high school, Crane Tech High School, uh, this was, I was August. not, they told me I was going to be drafted in a, in a couple of weeks. I couldn't believe it. I, <laughs> I was <laughs> planning on going to college, you know. And this all happened in the month of June, right after my 18th birthday and the graduation and all that. Uncle Sam had a graduation present for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so you went to Crane Tech High School? Yeah. Yes. So you lived down in... Uh, I lived on uh, Thomas Street. You took three buses to get there. But I, took, I had, had no car or anything. Was that the North Austin area? Yes. North Austin. That's the North. Uh, north. It was uh, Division Street Streetcar at that time they had. Oh, yes. And then you go to Grand Avenue, and Grand Avenue you get on that, go down to Western Avenue, <laughs> get off and get on this, another streetcar and take take that down to Now the kids your get medicine. on the bus. <laughs> it took you forever, especially in the winter time. So, um, all the guys, were they looking forward to going in the Army? Or were they worried? The what? All your friends who graduated from Crane Tech at that yeah. time, they all probably wound up in the service, did they? Hey, I don't know what happened to, to yeah. them. You know? Yeah. Well, this. 
this one guy. Klinka, did he go to Klinka? Klinka, Klinka I don't remember whether he went to the schools, but or he found that picture. Did he go to the Holy Trinity? Yeah, Skiing Klinka. I, I don't remember. Yeah. So, but, so you were, but this, you know, 1943, that was the big time where everybody was being drafted, everybody was, uh, uh, you know, unbelievably involved in the war. You know, people, everybody was going into the service or working for some, you know, like that. From uh, working in the war projects, right? Huh? They had uh, everything going in Chicago, all yeah. the people working the war, you know, for yeah. the war. The time. home front, the war effort, yeah. 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 So, Mr. Regal, you were, you enlisted or you were drafted? You, well, I did not enlist. You drafted, you were drafted. But I had no choice. You had no choice. Yeah. And then, uh, so did you, I, you know, I just got out of school right. and all this and I was planning on, going to school, you know, college. Yeah. And they well, told, were you interested in the Army instead of the Navy? Well, I I wanted the Air Force. I you wanted, wanted the Air Force? Why yeah. was that? Because wanted, he had a high IQ. They took yeah. him as a cadet. I went in as a cadet and I was going to... I went to Jefferson Barracks. That's in St. Louis. And uh, there I went through six weeks of basic training. And uh, and uh, from there, I was going to to go into the aviation, uh, you know, try to become a pilot. Wow! And that's when uh, they told me you couldn't do it. Because so, he didn't have coordination. Yeah, they told me that I. So you chose. Why did you chose the Air Force or Air? Want because I wanted to become a pilot. Oh, you wanted to become a pilot, okay. And um, you were explaining about the the judgment or the assessment of um, the abilities to be coordinated in the air, and you were saying something about right hand versus left hand, or yeah, yeah. how does that work? Well, I could do a lot of things with my right, right hand, but to my left is that's all I do is hold something or that, but to write, to to use wrenches, you know, uh, you can't, I can't do it with my left hand. Left hand, yeah. But I could do everything with my right hand. Yeah. And on a plane, you have to use. And when you're on a plane, and everything you, have to you use know, two hands. you have to be able to handle all the uh, instruments and all that while you're flying. You got. Be able to guide the plane and all of this. So you 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 complete this aviation cadet training, or you go through it, and then this issue comes up that well, you're probably not going to be able to be a pilot because of the left hand right handed Right, right. But they're still going to keep you in the in the air in the Army Air Forces, right. yeah. And so then they went ahead and they. Uh, sent me to school, not to school, but the, let's see, I went from there, I went to Delhart, Texas, I went to uh, one, or one, one or two others, you know, traveling from base to base, and then I wound up in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, and they assigned me to the crew that, you know, and when I was at uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, uh, we were all together. We picked up our plane, a B-17. Brand new plane. Brand, brand new, well, just, yes. And from there, we flew to um, Maine. And from Maine, we went to Iceland and stayed there a couple days. Then from Iceland, we flew to the Aleutian Islands, 
you know, I, I think what it was is uh, to, to let people know that where we were going is they weren't going to tell anybody because at that time everything was secret, you know. That was a long flight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went to the Aleutians Islands. From there we went to, uh, uh, what's that island? Tunisia. You were in Tunisia. We went to Madag Madagascar. From there we went to uh, Tunisia. And from Tunisia we went to, uh, uh, I forget, in this way. Fulja, Italy. Fulja. That's where I flew all my missions. So all that, um, that flying around the world. Uh, Halfway, yeah. That does kind of shake out to you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Iceland was very interesting to go to. <laughs> but, uh, Why was that? <laughs> the ice? But, uh, yeah. but the thing there is, uh, that became my home then. Fulja, Italy. Which was Foggia is located uh, near Naples. Oh, thank you. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there we lived in tents, you know, and uh, uh, it was unbelievable how we <laughs> lived there. And not only that, but then you never knew from one day to another day what you were going to be doing, what, where you were going, and, uh, whether you were going or anything. And you had to worry about people would take off, you know, people that you talked to today and the mission came, you'd go out, you come back and all of a sudden this person is missing. They were, you know, somehow they were either shot down or whatever. And that you had to do every day, you know, wait a couple of days before you fly your next mission. And it was early in the morning, like 3.30, 4 o'clock. And you would get up at 4 in the morning, you know, and then a flight would normally take off around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. And you'd come back sometime in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. What time morning. of the year was this? Huh? What time of the year was this? This was uh, August. August. August? Okay. August to roughly, uh, I got to lose it somewhere. This is August of 1944. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. August of 44, probably? Yeah. 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 And uh, he was only two, two months out of And I was more or less all away from the. Because when we were. Uh, yeah, those are all the missions I flew. And uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it looks like your first mission was uh, July 24th, 1944. Yeah, I have. Can you, and you have, and you flew 50 missions, was it? 51, yeah. 51. Yeah. Were you? Actually, I think it all amounted to about 36 flights. But because of the distance, you know, like if you flew like into Yugoslavia or well, those were short, they were maybe 500 miles. But some of the missions, we went to Poland, uh, Schwitzen, Poland. And then we flew into uh, Germany. And those were long flights. So you would get credit for two missions. But they would take you a long time. Was there any kind of um, rule that if you flew so many missions, you didn't have to fly anymore? No, no, no. Well, yeah, if you flew 50 missions like I did, yeah. That was That's it. how I got it. I left there and, uh, and I think the, the war was still going on pretty bad. But from there, I, uh, you know, we were shot down. I went to Barry, Italy. From Barry, Italy, I flew a few more missions. And then from when I got done, then I went to uh, France, and then I was put on a. I wanted they wanted me to go on a mission as a, what do you call those uh, bond bond, 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 bond rallies. Bond rallies. You know they used to have where they used to try to raise money. Yes. 
and they wanted me to go on a plane on a, one of the B-17s that returned, was shot down and returned, and they were going to put me on that, you know, to go touring, but I didn't want to fly anymore at that time. I said, I'm, I, I'm running out of time. Well, tell them when you were shot down and you could tell you what happened. Is that November 16th of that year, from what I see here? It says Yugoslavia, yeah. Pence, is that uh, the date then? Yeah. That was your 36th mission, actually, which classifies oh, 51. That was your last one, obviously, but it was uh, November 16th. Well, tell them how you were shot down and then you had to find your way back to Italy. I was shot down. And uh, see now, I've got to put this together. We were shot down, and uh, it was in the what, what was that? Now the garden. Olive garden. Yeah. And uh, and the people from Tito came and surrounded the plane. And they patriots. Were, he was patriots. They were very, very friendly. And they looked at the plane. They looked at the, the rear end of the plane where I was standing next to. And they couldn't believe that I made it without getting hurt. And what happened is the plane was hit above, but right behind me. And it was uh, that... Uh, was torn off. And from the bottom where I was kneeling, you know, in a tail position, you have to fly on your knees, you know, to be able to. And that area was damaged also, but they had a metal, uh, what do you call those, protecting that area. Metal. And Good thing I didn't get hit there. They couldn't believe that I flew and made it there. So the plane was able to land? It, uh, it was forced down. Yeah, we couldn't, we were planning on going maybe to, uh, uh, what was it, Sweden or one of those countries, but we couldn't get that far. And we went down over there. We couldn't even make it to Italy. So you you were shot at by German planes or ground artillery? Or? We were shot down by Flak and Derisov. Once you got close to any target, you were surrounded by uh, uh, you were surrounded by Flak, what they call these missiles or whatever they shot from the ground level. And they uh, surrounded the fighter planes would be coming in at you. Your, your, this everything was all at one time, and you had to fight back with your guns. You know, try to shoot them down. And uh, do you remember when you fired the guns for the first time in in, in oh, the air? Yeah, that was that was memorable. I bet. You know, at one time we were shot down so bad, and then those, uh, I remember the Tuskegee Airmen, okay, Airmen the, at that the time, pilots. they were, in, in the, they had a, fight, a fighter group, and they protected us. If it wasn't for them, we would have never made it to the base. Yeah. They were, they were, they were all really black men, the Tuskegee Airmen. Yeah, they have a great record for yeah. protecting yeah, the yeah. bombers in right. the air. Yeah. And they, if it wasn't for them. And uh, that's basically the way I was there almost every two days or so. I, was, I, I didn't know where I was going, whether I was coming back, because uh, a lot of these, you had you new friends, people, and all that. And you'd go in the morning, and if you were lucky enough to get back, but then you know, some of these people would not come back. They just disappeared. 
like our crew, yeah, the other rest of the crew, you know. When, when you were um, forced down by the flak in, in yeah. Yugoslavia, was anybody, was every, did all the crew make it out of that, or was anybody in Well, we all went down. Yeah, yeah, went down. Yes. But from there we went down, and we, of course, we met Tito, and uh, and they take, took us to uh, to one of the towns there, and they they took us in, and and we stayed there for a couple of days, but uh, we met some. I mean, the, being me, I was not basically no one, but the pilots and all that. They were, uh, what do you call that? They were quizzed and all that by the aviation. They treated us real nice. They gave us a little uh, from the from where we were to this little town there. They they had uh, escorted us, you know, and then uh, we stayed there for a couple of days. They fed us and all that, and then they that was the last I saw them crew, more, more or less, because they somehow, being ranked, you know, like lieutenants and all that, they more or less went their way and we went our way. And you had to find a place to get back to Italy. So tell them all, that story. Yeah, how did you get oh, back from, from... And then on that we got, uh, finally I got onto uh, a fishing boat. I had a weight. And uh, that was just on, just off the island there. And we took that and we went to... How many people? Just you or somebody else was it you? No, I was, then, that's where I got more of us separated from the crew. After that, I didn't see many of them. I don't know what happened to them. But I know that's where the last time I saw the pilot. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, navigator, he was shot down before that. You know, he went on a mission. You never hear him no more. What happened to him or anything? Yeah. So, did you have to did you have to make your way back to Fogio yeah, then? We got on that boat, and we went to uh, uh, we went to Barry Italy, and uh, going there. You were on a, a small fishing boat, and I was the only one from the crew that was on it. And when we got there, there was guns being fired. You know, it, it was uh, at the war was going on. People, and they told me to get out of out of the area, go somewhere. You know, so then uh, I went more or less into the hills or whatever you want to call that. Then finally someone picked me up and they drove me back to to the base. But it, it, it could, could have, anything could have happened. And it's, it's unbelievable that you would be going through all this every day not knowing what yeah. the next day was going to be like. The know. stress, even for uh uh, Even for a young person who's pretty resilient, the stress yeah. has got to get to you after a while, I would guess. Yeah. And you know, you know, being like that, every every day you were waiting, get up and you never knew where, where you're going. You get up at four in the morning and you'd, you'd be told to go to a, a uh, what do you call that area? Holding area? And where, where they make the... Assignments or the assignments, briefings, yeah. and what you're going to be doing that day, and uh, but that's how you found out, you know, from the other day, you never knew where you were going. Yeah. So, did you fly more missions after you were in Yugoslavia? Oh yes. But with a different crew. Was it yeah, different, different every day crew? after that, they would assign me. Being a ta tail gunner at that time, being a tail gunner, I think. There were only about 20% of the tail gunners would make it to to come back to the states, and I, you know, so that's the way it was. You know, you you from day to day you were you never knew because you were a tail gunner. You were 
they needed a lot more, so you were assigned to, Around, a different, yeah. to a different crew, you know, whoever needed a pilot, I mean a tail gunner. And that's the way I, I had to wait. From day and then to when, day. You were, when, you, when you folks were hit in, in Yugoslavia, when, when you first got hit, uh, you must have thought, this is a bad situation. Yeah. I wonder what's oh, going on. Yeah. They start saying your prayers or something, or right? I mean, it must have been. Oh, when, you, when I was in frightening. The, we go Slavia, Those people were out of this world, and then they made up their mind they were going to take care of us, or take care of me. And they finally got a boat, yeah. put me on the boat. And, and yet you were able to go back up in the air after that without, yeah, without any back, fear. A couple of days later, I was flying again. It was rough. How did you do it? I don't I know. Am, I'm amazed. I don't know. It was rough. You know, being more like an individual because every day you were assigned to a different yeah. crew. Yeah. Because the crew I was on, I don't know whatever happened to them. Wow. Because uh, when we were in Yugoslavia, you know, they, they separated me from them, you know. Yeah. I was sent on the to get on that boat, you know, and I was the only one. And it was something horrible. I think someone paid, I don't know, gave him something to, to bring me to Barry. But, but I was the only one from the crew. What an experience. And, uh, and then when, when I think about it, you know, people were being shooting at one another. It was actually a war going. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents know that you had been shot down? Oh yeah, they knew that. They must have been worried to yeah. sick to death. I would write, you know, write letters. Well, even like myself, I, <coughs> when I went into the service, there were a few people that I knew, and we would correspond, would send letters. But then all of a sudden, you know, some of them went to England, some of some went somewhere else, and all of a sudden, no more letters. If something happened to him, you know. It was rough. Not from day to day you don't know whether you were here or there or where. Okay, now for the humorous side, he's saying in the USO. <laughs> oh, that was... That's a question on here. Did the, how did yeah. the soldiers entertain themselves when off duty? <laughs> did you have USO shows? Yes. Any <laughs> famous entertainers? Yeah. What did you do when you were on leave or travel? I tried it, but uh, you sang in the USO. The what? You sang in the USO. Yeah, at the one time, yeah. And then he, he saw a lot of celebrities, right? You saw yeah. a lot of movie stars and all that. Yeah, I was, I was in, uh, I was in. Uh, California. Oh, in California? I think so. I thought you said it was in Italy. You didn't see no USO. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you're you're right, USO yeah. in Italy? Yeah. They used to have these, uh, what, you know, where they had entertainers. I forget at that time. Who the heck was this one? Did you see Bob Hope? <laughs> I was just going to say yeah, Bob Hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you saw Bob that. Hope. And oh, yeah. But at that time, they used to have these groups of people that would entertain these, you know, the people in the service. It must have helped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, it would help a lot. What movie stars did you see? You saw a few movie stars. Oh, I don't remember now. Remember. There, there were so many. Yeah. But uh, that was it. You know. Were there any other, can you recall anything else that was memorable or funny or so you, what? was there anything funny that happened or something strange and no. you find yourself still thinking about it at an odd time like, oh yeah, I wonder how that happened, that was really something. No, the only, the only thing I, I remember a lot was one day it informed me that because I wanted to be in the service and become a pilot. pilot. And uh, when they told me that I would not be able to 
and this and all that and mean nothing to me. You know. It hurt. Uh, but I always wanted to be a pilot. Yeah. So you're, um, um, this morning you brought in some, some of your medals, or the medals that you received, right? So we should probably read these into the record. So you have, uh, we've got, on this uh, 301 bomb group yeah, that's uh, a frame, frame yeah. collection here of the metals. See, this is the metal here. Which one is that? These are the, the what do you call those? The clusters. Clusters or? That says what? Sharpshooter carbine submachine gun. And then this one says uh, rifle. Yeah, that was where, when I was going through uh, gunnery school, they had, you know. And then this patch means that you're in a, the triangular patch with that, a bomb? What does yeah, that, that mean? When we, you know, you, you'd get one of those when you were flying, you know, with bomb, bomb runs. And, you, and they had these for you to put on your... And then this See, Algeria, Libya, Tunisia, Naples, and Folgia. That's where I went. To Join Africa. the Air Force and see the world, huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of. And then up here, these are... Um, those are metals. I forget what those are now. And there's clusters up here, right? These oak leaves yeah. up here? Yeah. On the bars? Yeah. And this is a handsome metal here. This is the air... Yeah. That's the air metal? Yeah. 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 So you you fly the, the aerial gunnery Las Vegas, Nevada. See? Yeah. So you you fly fifty missions. Yeah. So you you reached the limit then. Yeah, I went all the way. All the way. Um, you must have been delighted when the war was over. No, the war was still going on. But were you, you must have been happy though when the war did end. So yeah, yeah. You must we were have been happy been. when the war ended. Oh, yes. Oh, because yes. Because he might have been sent to the other side, to Japan. They were, at that time, the war was still going on, and it was going on with the Japanese. And they were planning on taking me and putting me to go on a B-29. On a mission? On a mission, yeah. Even though you already did your... me to a crew to go on a mission to, to uh, yeah. Japan. Even though you already did your 50 yeah. in yeah. Europe. Yeah, they were planning it. There wow. was still another war going with the Japanese. Yeah. And they were going to put me on a crew and, and to, you know, to fly missions up there. And I'm glad that didn't happen. Why didn't it happen? The war ended? Yeah. The what? Why didn't it happen? Because the war ended with Japan. That's right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because, the war ended, right? Because just that's when that war was done. August, 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 the man, 92 years old from the Nola Gate, that crew to Bobby died. He just died, Mr. Tebbets, I think. Yeah, and they said that that was the Nola Gate, that was his mother's name. I didn't know that. I read that. That's, that's just the time where they and bombed. And they dropped the bomb in uh, Hiroshima. Yeah. The, the atomic bomb. Yeah. And killed so many people. And they asked him if he... But I was there when the, the, the war was at its peak, you know. It's... Uh, 43, 44. It was at 44, the, the 40, American... 43, 44, 45 were the big years. Mm -hmm. 43 was just before the war really got started, you know, the invasions of, uh, of France yeah. and the invasion of uh, Africa, France, and uh, that's the way it went. Cool. So, when the war ends and you come back to Chicago, did you have a how did it feel to be a civilian again? No, when I got back... No, they sent them to Truex Field in Madison. No, you were in California for a while. Uh, what, for what? an hour and hour. Right? When I got back, they put me on a 
uh, I didn't fly, I didn't want to fly back on that <laughs> mission, you know, on that. Uh, so I told them no, so then I waited about a week or two, then finally they got, got me on a, on a boat to come back on a boat. It was not, not a military, I think it was, I don't know, one run by the government or what. But anyway, I came back and it took almost two weeks. <laughs> to cross the, crossing the Atlantic? Yeah. Really? Because, because of the, uh, what do you call, uh, you had submarines and yeah. all that, they had a void, everything. They didn't have any uh, celebrity cruise line at that time? <laughs> no, well, they wanted, to, cross. They, were, they wanted to sign me to a plane to, to, be, to be on a, uh, what do you call that? A bond, bond. Selling bonds. Selling bonds. They were shot so I, I turned them down yeah. and I told them no. Had had enough of that. that. So okay. then I was on that fishing boat and then it took a while to get to New York. And the thing that I remember distinctly and I couldn't believe it was the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was she pretty? Yeah. She and pretty. from there, from there we went to. I forget where it was and what we had a. I, I had, went to California for hour and hour. I know you told me. I had a, a terrific one. I got through. I think it was New Jersey or somewhere on there. There was unbelievable. Any kind of food you wanted, it was all made. Help yourself, eat all you want. You couldn't believe it, how they did it. In Me. California, you fell off a horse. <laughs> oh, well, that was. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of horse. It's true. Yeah, he was in California, and there and there, and he fell off a horse, right? Uh, yeah, Maybe. that was. That was at the time, I think, when I was. Uh, they were going to get me ready for going to Japan. Japan, yeah. <laughs> but I was more or less, you know, being a tail gunner, they, they assigned me to be yeah. just that. You go here you today, the next day you go here. here. It was interesting. Yeah, what's, what's that guy that uh, they flew, they flew uh, entertaining the troops. Bob Hope? No, not Bob Hope. Somebody else. And they took off and nobody ever heard of them. Oh, Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller. Glenn, Glenn Miller. Miller's band, yeah. Glenn Miller's band, I don't know yeah. If you oh, yeah. And they don't know what happened to this day. They don't know what happened to yeah. them. They took off and they never heard from them. Never heard from them again. Yeah, so what happened though when, with California? Yeah, you were you California. went to California and for you were there hours. waiting. So when the the war ended and you were shipped back here, when the war ended uh, in '45, no '46, then '45. '45. Well, what happened? I mean, you were in California. Is that where the last place you were in the service? I think that was that's it for the. You know where I went from there? I went to uh, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, so you went from California to Madison. Yeah. What the heck did you go there for? He, they were gonna, he was going to muster out. Oh, that's where you get released? Yeah. 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 Because and the war was over. Yeah, so the yeah. war was over. You, you were in California when, right. okay. when they dropped the bombs in Japan? Yeah. Right? I don't know. I don't remember that. Yeah, well, it must have been. And then, based on what you're saying here, and then, and then, but, uh, when the war was over, though, they yes. they sent you to uh, be checked out. Be checked out, and that was October. And I met him pr prior to that. He was still in service. I met him in June of '46. No, '45. He was in his uniform when you met him? Yeah, that's what, that's what it was. <laughs> Where did you meet him? At a dance. Where was the dance? The dance was at Helene Curtis on North Avenue. And my girlfriend's mother worked for Helene oh Curtis. And we went that's to Walmart dance. now. And I was that's 18 that super years old. Walmart with all this. You were 18? Yeah, and I liked men in uniform. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> 
And yeah, or you should go back there. there. You could go shopping at that Walmart. That's a super Walmart that oh, they that had all that commotion about. Yeah, about building it or not building it in Chicago. Is that North Avenue in Pulaski or someplace? North yeah. Avenue in Costner, Costner, I think, right? Oh, and then That's the where Helene Curtis, I remember going by. Then the funniest folks. part of it, I, was the, I went to Carl Schurz High School. Oh, the Bulldogs, yeah. Yeah, and I went, I, I had a, a in my uh, class was a girl, Albina Welk, and he was writing to her. Oh, during the During the war. The war. And, and she said, I can't go to the prom because my boyfriend's in service. <laughs> well, did I know that was going to be my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so then I met him at this dance and I showed some of my friends, you know, the pic his picture and they said, Oh my god, that's Albina boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened to Albina? <laughs> I don't know she was in the town for all that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and so uh, so then uh, what was that? Oh, then he made a date with me, he took me home from the dance, we had to go on the streetcar because he didn't have no car at that time, we went on the streetcar, he took me home, he made a date to see me in a week or two, and his sister called me saying that he can't make it, and then I was all upset, and I said, pray. <laughs> I worked at St. Anne's Hospital, oh, yeah. and every day I go to the chapel and I pray that I get a letter from him. And I got a letter from him saying that he was be, he had to go back to Muster Off, and uh, but he, he's going to see me. And then on top of it, I had a cousin that was a sergeant in the army. And he said, "Oh, you know those servicemen? They're here today in Gosford." <laughs> so I said, "Crying." <laughs> Oh, so he basically came from California back home for a short period a and then mustered out in yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, and then true, yeah. you know, he was, was home from every weekend. That, week that was later. Was First you were home for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he from Truett's Field, Wisconsin, Madison, he used to come home almost every week yeah. and because of, uh, you know, it's close. He'd get a ride from somebody and he'd come home, but he had to go back. Ah, okay. So you were married the following year then? Or? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> But I remember when I was at in, uh, Madison, there the people, the, I guess they were more or less drafting these guys or what into the service, but they were met, pointing their fingers and couldn't believe that I, at my age, was had 15 missions already. You know, they were treating me as a celebrity. They couldn't believe it. As someone, you know. Point of <laughs> 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 but it was uh, like a, I don't know, uh, whether they were drafting him or, but they were big going into the service. Yeah. But that was after the war already. Well, that's yeah, transit was actually was going, going on. on like that. I went to Frisco. You know, that, that's transit, I, transit uh, people for where you wait for assignments. Yeah. Where were you sure that's where. I forgot. That was uh, Treasure Island, Island, San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco, you were all. Yeah. I thought it was Great Lakes. No, that's where I was on. Uh, yeah. That's where I did my uh, duty before boot, boot camp. Yeah, boot camp. So in Chicago then. You mentioned before the war that you mentioned that the war interrupted your plans for college. Did you use the GI Bill? No, you oh, got married. <laughs> no, I remember then from there, I went to, you know, like I told you to, uh, I saw the Statue of Liberty, then I went to this place for a few days, and then they sent me home. And at that time, of course, uh, you had to take a train because flying was limited and uh, so then they sent me from there, they sent me to uh, this area by North Chicago. Great Lakes? Great Lakes. No, not Great Lakes, Fort Sheridan. Fort Sheridan, Fort Sheridan. Yeah. yeah, that time. And then from there, <laughs> I 
went on a, I had to get home, we had no transportation. So from there I went to, uh, uh, what's that lake? I'm no, no. But anyway, but anyway, from there I had to take a street, uh, Lake Michigan, street streetcar, not a streetcar, but something, to Chicago downtown. From there I took a, a train and went home to where I lived, 4300 Thomas Street, yeah. and walked. I got up, I got there, then I walk up the stairs, my sister was home. And she said, what are you doing here? <laughs> she couldn't believe it, you know, because I never knew where I was going. And I wound up where, where I was at home. Yeah. And I got home, it was Christmas Eve at that time. Just for the holiday, the 1940. Like, yeah, funny? Oh, really? You got on Christmas Eve, too? Wow. Yeah. I'll never forget we were, we were the man we went to church when, when we got to San Diego when he was uh, released. And we had mass, Catholic mass, in the, it was in a uh, room where all the big, big shots, you know, he said, you know, like the lieutenants and all that, they used to gather there, and we had mass there. And they had a one place they were having the mass, and the next place they had a bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was right, yeah. they used the table right yeah. next to a bar. And then the next day we had a feast, the Navy put on a feast for all the families. And wow. they had everything from soup to nuts, and then we gathered with all the Pueblo crew. And my daughter was 16 at the time. She had the life of Riley Solomon. <laughs> oh, and then my other son was in service too. And they didn't take him. At the same because, time. Yeah, at the same time. Because they didn't take him. And he said, Ma, don't stop me. His brother was missing and he was going in. I was like yeah. hard and hard here. So they didn't take him overseas because he wrote a letter. He says, my one son is missing. Don't take another one away from me. So he stayed in San Diego. And that, uh, he was in the, but he was in the Navy uh, Air. He was in the Navy Air. And uh, so yeah, he was when, we to came, when we came to San Diego, we all joined as a family. And they gave us the Navy. First time I ever was on a plane. I was 40 years old. They escorted me down the ramp to United Airlines. <laughs> and we got to San Diego. We had to hide from the reporters. We had to go the other way because they were on our necks. And, um, and then we all had a reunion, family reunion. My daughter was 16 and my other son was, how old was Larry? I was 20, 20, 20. 20 then. Yeah. 20. 20. 20. I was 21, so he was 20. Yeah. They were a year apart. They're like, like almost like twins. <laughs> His brother and him. Yeah, I guess Larry was supposed to go aboard the Enterprise, yeah. but then that got canceled. His orders because yeah. of what the that. Enterprise. No, I think it was something else. But I don't no, remember. I the Enterprise, maybe mm -hmm. he was right. But I thought he had a lot of courage to go in when his brother's missing. <laughs> And my son-in-law, too, served in, in the Army Air Reserve, no, Army Reserve, but he didn't go over to you. Mark. Mm -hmm. Mark was, my, that was my son-in-law, my daughter's husband. Yeah. He went in, but he had to go for, like, every week or, for, you know, for these reserve treat things that they used to go on. But he didn't go yeah. over to you. He just stayed stateside. So... So Mr. Agalo, did he, he got married then. You, you got married just right yeah. after the war. Yeah, right. So, was it easy to get a job then? Well, it was difficult. Being, he worked at Forsheim Shoe Company. Being uh, young, you know. 
So the first job I, I got was over at... Uh, Four Chain Shoe. No. It oh. was at North Avenue. International Harvester? Yeah. North Avenue and uh, what's that other street? I don't down? know. <laughs> All the way down west. Big. They had that big... Uh, they were building bombers in that location. So I went there and I got a job, but it was too much travel time between where I lived and going all the way out there, so I quit. And then from there I went and I worked for Hoi Shang Shu. But I didn't like that job either. But there was nothing available. And then, then my father, I knew he was a very good in uh, drafting, you know, he was articulate with all that drafting stuff in that high school. So I pulled out all that of his material and I gave it to my father. My father was a salesman. He traveled all Chicago and he knew of places, you know, so he got him a job at Delta Star. Delta Star, right? Yeah. Porter. Electric. And he started as a draftsman, and because I gave him this material for them to show, and they liked that, they liked what he, they saw, and they started him was on the job training, and uh, he didn't make much money at the time, but he was they were training. No, but him. I stayed there, and he stayed there and for I worked my way years. up to. Uh, where I had people working for me. Yeah, he was a design I, engineer. I yeah. used to build, uh, design equipment for power plants from, you know, like, uh, obviously, Florida Power or the one we have here on the, in Wisconsin. But anyway, they, uh, he worked there for 35 years, and then they closed the door, and then at age 58, he but had But it was designing job. equipment from the generator to the main power transformers to design it, you know. And uh, at that time, I, I, I had a terrific memory. You know, I could, I didn't, when I built that stuff, someone would ask me a question when they were assembling it, where does this go? That's all I would do is, it goes over here. I had, a, I could remember, I didn't need no books or nothing. He traveled too, you know, he and, traveled uh, to Florida. But I worked my way. In a plane? No, no, no. In a plane? Oh yeah, in a plane, yeah. You traveled in a plane, yeah. You traveled when you were in Brasco. Oh yeah, I were, used to travel a lot. Way, yeah. Going to all these places. Yeah. He loved flying, even after all that experience. Even to this day, he loves flying. Is that why you're looking forward to the 15th? You're going to fly? <laughs> he just, you're going to Florida. <laughs> oh, good, good. For the winter. He this is this page and the next page. Yeah, this Regala was showing me. This is uh, a notebook Yeah. that he carried with him through the war. That, that. And it has a lot of... Uh, that came from uh, Italy. <laughs> the details. <laughs> So is this S slash sergeant, does that indicate staff sergeant or? Yeah. yeah. Staff sergeant. Staff sergeant yeah. when he got out, yeah. Or were you a stiff sergeant? <laughs> the roughest mission was on a, could you read this into the record that there? The roughest mission was on August the 27th. Mission number 21 over Black Hammer, Germany, oil storage. We had a lot of fighters and flak on the way in, that's to the target, and on the way back from the target area, we were forced down over Vis, Yugoslavia. From there we came back by, to bury Italy by a fishing boat. And that that the time you met uh, yeah. Tito and the part the yeah, uh, right. partisans or whatever yeah. That's yeah. good. He had that book was because you would never remember all that now. Oh. You know, it's good thing he had that written yeah. down. Yeah. Well, well, never remember some, like that now. Yeah. That yeah. That's priceless. It is.
all the destinations and the, the numbers. What does that say? Finish. <laughs> 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 yes, we just bombing on November the 16th. You said it was kaput, mission, mission number 51, uh, troop concentration in Yugoslavia. And that's when all the missions were over. But finished. For you? Yes. Did you, because you have a beer when you got out that, after that trip or something? Believe so, it or not, he didn't drink. He didn't drink, okay. No. He sold his beer and cigarettes. When I was in the service, when we were in Europe, when I was with, with the rest of the people, I was very popular because every week you would get six beers. That you could buy six beers, you know. And of course at that time I didn't drink. So I would sell my beer to these, they, they, they fight over. And, uh, I would get their coke or whatever uh, refreshment they had, and they would they would give that to me, and I'd give them the beer and, and how much pay did me you make? Beer. Huh? How much did you make on each beer? A couple thousand, he made. No, no. at that time. You said you sent your mother home a couple thousand dollars. Well, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but every week. You know, these guys, well, I don't blame them, you know. <laughs> and then, of course, they used to play a lot of uh, dice. <coughs> gamble. <laughs> did you play cards, too? No, I didn't. No? Yeah. Well, dice. how long did it all start then after that, where he started doing all that? Because then he started drinking, he started playing cards, he, he did all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Made up for lost time, I think, later on. <laughs> with the family, with most of the family get together, and mother loved to play oh, cards. Oh, we used to play the four cards. in the morning. <laughs> when I got all played. evening, all, you know, Sunday all night, family. Sunday evening. Pinochle or? Pinochle uh, well, was the big game. Oh, yeah. One of our favorite games was Pinochle. But Sunday nights, they'd play like till 9, 10 o'clock in the evening, and, you know, we were all going to work the next day, but that's how much they loved it. They played Friday or Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So you, uh, when you come back from the war and you're married and you're getting a job, did you, you didn't have time to, for uh, veterans groups or reunions or things like that? Or, or no. no. Then oh, oh yes, he did belong to a Polish organization for a while until it folded up. It was the Polish veterans. And the kids were little, we used to go to their Christmas party, but it folded up shortly, right? It wasn't in existence too long. That was the only thing. I don't remember that at all. So, yeah. Do you remember that? Not at all. No, not at all. It had to be a you, you were little at the time. You were small. And we used to take you to these Christmas parties to Santa Claus. As we, uh, as we approach the end of the interview, we always ask the question, uh, how do you think being in the service and having those experiences affected your life? Did it? Well, I think it helped my life a lot, you know. Because I, in a way, I was in a, like a hardship being in the service. But then now when I got out, I, I always, like the family, like to be with the family, and stuff like that. And like I worked for the company so so many years, and the the things I did, I think had a lot to tied into it. You it know. was a lot of discipline. The service disciplined them, bothered them a lot. Well, you hardship. Know. It was a. It was hard. And a sense of accomplishment that you can. A sense of accomplishment yeah. that you can look back on and derive strength from. Yeah. Right. Can I handle this? I can probably yeah. mm -hmm. design that generator or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the designer, being a design engineer, they couldn't believe that I... They couldn't believe he didn't have college. That I didn't have the education to do that type of work. People, I had people working for me that had 
uh, college graduates, yeah. and they couldn't. If without me, they wouldn't be able to do the work. Yeah. And that's a fact. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, that's the high IQ. Yeah. That's the high that's IQ. That's the high yeah. IQ. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah the high IQ. Yeah. yeah. Do, um, do you think your military experience influenced your thinking about war? Or about the military in general? Well, I don't know. But I, I, we don't believe in the I, Iraq war. I don't believe in wars, no. no. What they're doing in the Iraq or... Yeah, I no, think we're against that it. That is a mistake. They should never went in there. It's your man, Bush. <laughs> 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 well, sometimes people, uh, when they're in office, they 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 think they have to act presidential, and it's not maybe not what people were thinking when they were thinking about them before. I don't know. It's and you see his uh, appropriations for he claims that he's uh, the amount that are given to veterans. He's he's jacked that yeah. number way oh, up. Of what they're doing there. Way up. I know. Well, no, he's, he's, he's given a lot to veterans though. So. I think the they're other, lacking in the more than other medical presidents. field in, in, the, in the, where you go, the VA hospital. They're lacking. Yeah. And they're not equipped for all these people coming back with mental health problems. They're not equipped for that. Yeah. I think they're going to do a better job, though. I no hope so. But it's a little, yeah. it's just too bad. Yeah. I was reading, uh, my aunt sent me these papers from England, and it's the same thing with their soldiers coming back. They're not prepared. They're not prepared to handle these the mm -hmm. problems or the number of them, and they're on a much smaller scale. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, but I well, remember when years ago in the VA, you walked into the building, whatever you wanted to do, you wanted to eat a donut or coffee or whatever, it was they didn't charge you for it. Now you go in there, they have these slot machines. They rip, machine. basically, well, machine. Machine. vending machines. Right? <laughs> yeah. They ripped you off, as, as a matter of fact. <laughs> nothing for nothing. You <laughs> pay for it. You wanted clubs. You wanted to get glasses. You know, pay for it. You know. Yeah, he used to get glasses every year, and then all of a sudden this year they said, "We'll give you a prescription, but no glasses." So what good does that do? Yeah. They denied him glasses. A man that made took 51 missions to yeah, serve the country, and then they it's denied him glasses. Not like it glasses. used to be, in other words. Yeah, yeah the yeah. category <laughs> seven and eight so or something pregnant. like that. Those veterans uh, lost a lot of their benefits recently. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's it's just the opposite because I'm a, I'm a three with the POW status, but with him not having any. History, so you didn't go to the VA and, and go to the yeah. hospitals for a lot of years after. I started going as soon as I could start going because I had these issues. So once we became once we became POWs, like 20 years after, they didn't recognize us, so I didn't go for a long time either. But once they did, then I started going, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas he didn't, and then the two of us started going and. He was getting pretty real good care, but then they started cutting back at the, mm -hmm. you know, top end, you know, yeah. the seven and eight category. But you still got the medicine benefit the where medicine you pay a small benefit, amount. Yeah. So that's helpful, and yeah. you still could see a doctor in that. Once a year. There's still there's still the benefits there, but they're not as good as the few things are not like they used to be. But. Yeah. The old gray Mary, what she used to be. <laughs> 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 Mr. Regal, is there is there anything you want to add to the interview at this time? No, that we didn't I cover. So. I I do have a nice family. Yes, my two sons and my daughter. They're, they're very nice people, and. Uh, we're fortunate and I have for raising our kids. And for 61 years, I have a wife, a very good wife. So I'm <laughs> happy with that. Sorry, what you said well, yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming in. <laughs> <laughs>
John Hating is memoir, memoir of service and for sharing your uh, your wonderful family uh, with us the purposes of this project. Thank you. Okay.